Good morning, church. I'm Pastor Brad Berta. I'm the pastor at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Watertown, South Dakota. And this is our word for the week. If you've been with us on this journey with the Apostle Paul through the book of Colossians, you know that we're in the last half of chapter 4 of his letter to the church. We begin. Tychus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, our faithful and dear brother, who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. My fellow prisoner Artiscacus sends his greeting, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is called Justice, also sends greeting. These are the only Jews among my co-workers for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those at Laodicea and Hierapolis. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. After this letter has been read to you, see that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans and that you re in turn read the letter from Laodicea. Tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the ministry you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. This is the word of the Lord. One of the things that amazed me about this last chapter in Colossians is how well connected Paul is to so many of the faithful who are going forth with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Truly, they are connected in a very powerful way through the gift of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God's holy word. As we walk through the final pages of, of Colossians, I think it's just amazing that Paul has such a connection with so many people and that he is so interconnected with so many of the saints who have gone before us. He mentions many of them. He mentions Tychus, and he mentions Epaphras, who is wrestling in prayer for us. He mentions Luke, one of the disciples, the doctor. And then he goes on to greet a woman named Nympha and the church in her house. You see, all these people are connected. They're connected by the gospel of Jesus Christ and his love for all people in the world and we just praise God for the interconnection that they have with one another as they seek to tell the world the powerful news that Jesus is alive and that he has risen and that he one day will come back and take us to the place he has promised. Yes, there is a major network of God's people joined together. This isn't a one-man show for the Apostle Paul. He is joined together in so many ways with so many people for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As I mentioned in my opening comments, this will be our last lesson in Colossians. Um, we are gonna take a little break from the word of the week, but I reassure you that I will be coming back to you with the Advent angle. Yes, that's right, the Advent angle. We're gonna take a look at the Advent passages that are found in Holy Scripture throughout December, and I'll have a, a little Bible study with you on Thursday mornings um, that I pray will be a blessing to you and help bring a clear focus to what God is talking to us about when he says, make ready, watch out, be prepared, I am coming. This is the word of the week.